Hi everyone and welcome to a scratch tutorial. I was going to do something like this for DigiD but obviously DigiD didn't happen this year so I'm just going to do it like this. Um, so let's get started. On scratch first what you want to do is you want to um, go and you want to actually click the create up the top how you see all the settings there's one that says create you just want to go and click that once you click that it'll take a minute to load okay we're in a blank project pretty blank pretty boring but we're gonna change that so first things first what we want to do is we actually want to get rid of the scratch cat that's right over here we want to actually get rid of that because that won't be any use to us at the moment so we're just going to bin that and there we go our blank project okay so first what we're going to do so i want you to go into choose a sprite and click the search bar now first you want to just go to the ball you can the ball is there you don't need to use a ball you can use anything circular shape but i think the ball is just easiest because you can change the color and it's highly customizable now first what you want to do is you just want to drag this anywhere into your screen preferably near enough to the middle and we are going to get started now first things first pick a backdrop go into the pick a backdrop section Go into it, click the search bar as you can see I'm doing right now. And you can choose any background you want. Um, I'm just going to pick the neon tunnel, but you can choose anything you want. Um, but I'm just going to use choose the neon tunnel, because I think that's easiest. And I'm going to drag it near enough to the middle. I can always change this later. So I'm going to go in, and I'm going to go into choose a sprite like last time and I'm gonna do this again this time this one is mandatory and you need to do this you need to go on search paddle okay you need to go into search and find the paddle you have to use the paddle so you need to drag it right like down to the bottom not right down like where I'm putting it now not too low to the bottom, but leaving a little space. Okay, next we're going to add our final sprite. You know what to do. But this time we're going to get the line. You have to get the line one. You're going to drag it right down to the bottom of your screen. And it should fit in just perfectly at the bottom of your screen like so. Oh, and you need to make sure the paddle is a little bit above it. Now next we're going to get started on the coding. Now, so our first bit of code, we're going to start coding on the ball. Now, first things first, you can pause the video as you go along, but first we're going to get the when start green flag clicked. We're going to drag that out onto the blank bit. Then we're going to go to motion, and we're going to find that you go to X minus 7, or wherever it is, go to X something Y something. And once you found that, you're going to drag it out under the wind green flag click block. Um, if you look on the right, it says the coordinates, but you don't need to do that. So when it says when it says your numbers on the go to X something, what you want to do because to get it perfectly centered when it starts, is you just want to change that minus seventeen on mine to zero. Then I'm also going to change up minus 30 in mine to a zero. And that should make it perfectly centred when the green flag is clicked to start. Next things we're going to do is we're going to go and find the point and direction block. We're going to drag that under. And we're going to change it to 45 degrees. You can change it using the wheel like I am or you can just type it in. You can do it either way as long as it's 45 degrees. Okay, next thing we're going to do is get a forever loop from the control section and drag it under those blocks we have just placed, connecting it. 
Now let's go back into motion and find the move 10 steps block. Drag it inside the forever loop, not below it, not above it, inside. So it kind of clips inside extremely well. And we're going to change that number to 15 steps. So whatever number is inside it most likely, then we're going to change that to 15. So next we are going to get point towards the mouse pointer. Block note, we're actually, we're not. We're going to get if on edge, comma, bounce from still the motion section. And we are going to drag that in the forever loop. And when we start it, it will start bouncing around the screen like so. Pretty cool. Um, and if you keep starting and stopping it, it will always start from the middle. So don't fear. Okay, we're going to keep going on. Okay, we're going to do a little bit more coding for the ball. So we're going to get another wind green flag clicked from the events section and find a forever loop from the control section once again. Feel free to pause the video or uh, slow it down so you can see. Next, we're going to get F this little shape, then block from the control and we're going to drag this inside the forever loop not under it inside it so that it is inside that forever loop next we're going to sensing and we're going to want to find the touching mouse pointer and we're going to drag the front of that into that little shape that i was talking about and let it go it should fit in perfectly so we're going to click that arrow where it says mouse pointer and we are going to change it to Paddle, which your sprite should be in for. And there we go. So, now get onto the coding of what happens when it touches Paddle. So we're gonna go into Variables down at the bottom, and we're going to click on the Make a Variable, where my mouse is. Come up with this. Type in score points, whatever you want to call your point system. I've called it score and it will show up on the top left hand side of the screen. As you can see here. So there we go. That's good. So I want to find the change my variable by one block. We're going to drag that inside that F touching paddle then. And we're going to drag it inside there. And we're going to change my variable, clicking it, change it to score. And that's going to be your score up in the corner. And next we need to get the turn 15 degrees and put it under that. But we want to change it from 15 degrees. You can do it either way. Um, uh, we're going to change that to 180. Okay. And we're going to get the move 10 steps block, drag it under there, and change it to 15 steps, similar to the last one. Next we're going to go into control, and we're going to find the wait 1 seconds block, and drag it under the coding that we had previously done, and change it to 0 0.5 or 0 0.5. That is that piece of coding done and there we go whenever it bounces off the green thing it gives you one score or point in that corner but when we start it again it is just going to keep our score of two and we don't want that we want it to reset our score so we're going to find when green flag clicked and we're going to get that and then we're going to get go back to variables and just set my variable to zero going to drag that in and change that my variable to score and that's all we need to do that's all the coding for the ball that we need to do so far so now when we click the green flag it will reset our score now to move on to the paddle coding so for the paddle the code is really simple so we're going to get when start click and then a forever loop from the control section and we're gonna make sure that the paddle is like just above the red line or else this will not work. So we're gonna go into the motion section 
and we are going to get the set X2 block in the control section, the blue section, the light dark blue section. We're going to drag that into the further loop. And then we're going to go into sensing and mouse X. So you see the mouse X one, we're going to get that, drag that to where it says minus 10 on my screen. And that's the code for the paddle done. Wherever I move my mouse to, that is where it's going to move the um, ball to, which is really interesting. So that is the code for the paddle done. Really, really simple. So now we're going to move on to the line. So what we need to do is we need to make it so it stops again when the ball touches the line. So first of all, we are going to go into the events section and we are going to go and we are going to get a win start clicked block like we always do and drag that out so after we drag that win start clicked block we're going to go down to control and get a forever a forever block and we're going to get the if that little shape then block okay we're going to drag that out, we're going to drag it inside that forever block. And once we do that, we're going to go into the sensing category and get the touching mouse pointer. Once we get that, we're going to click on mouse pointer and change it to ball. Okay, so next, you're going to go into control section again and get the stop all. So that would normally be us finished, but... um. I chosen to add in something a little extra, but now we've got a working game. You could leave it as this if you wanted. And then when you look, when it hits the red thing, everything stops. So we, we could finish there, but we're going to add in my little extra um, thing. So we're going to go into the costume section at the top left for the line. Make sure you're on the lines character. And you're going to go down to the bottom left where there's a little cat and then an add sign, a plus sign. You're going to hover over that and go to the paintbrush where it says paint. And it should create a new costume. I'm going to call it game over because that's what I'm going to say when you lose. I'm going, to, I'm going to make it so it says game over when you lose. So I'm going to name it that just to make everything a little bit easier. So we're going to go to the text tool there that's there switch to text tool and you're going to change you can change the text font i change it to pixel because it looks better and you can change where it says fill the color of the text i'm going to change it to white because i think it will contrast quite well with my background so then we're going to click in it'll bring up a um, lot of things and i'm going to type game over okay and then i'm going to and then it should once you type it it should show on your screen on the right hand side where your game is if you can see in mine you can see game over i'm having some difficulty typing there we go so once we've done that we're going to finish and drag it well this is just a way to make it bigger but to um, finish typing click off the painting bit and that should be you so you can make it as big as you want and then um Go on to the select bit on the left hand side and the select, the mouse one, and then if you grab the middle, you can move it. So you can move it to wherever you want it in your game. So I'm going to have it right there in the middle. So, and then switch back to the line costume. Now we're going to do a simple little bit of code. So, what we are going to do is we are going to go into the look section and get switch costume to and it should say game over or whatever you chose your thing to be. So we're going to drag that above the stop all block that we placed and drag it above so it goes above. Then we're going to go to events, get the when green flag clicked, drag that in where you want in the line bit, make sure you're online and get go back into looks and get the switch costume to game over, drag that under. You want to click on game over and change it to line. And there you have it. 
that is all of the code that you need to do to make your pong game, ping pong game. You can, you can do this with any background. You can do it with any ball. It does need to be a ball, but I recommend using the paddle and I recommend using the line. Um, and then there you go. When you hit the red line, it says game over. And then you get a game over. So that's my scratch tutorial. I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you try this out. You need to be on um, a computer and you need to be on Microsoft Edge. You can change it back before you play. And that is my scratch tutorial. Goodbye.